Hello and welcome to France 24's Tech Show. I'm Julia Seeger. As AI is disrupting roughly every segment of society, we take a look at what can be done to make sure that individuals, companies, and governments make responsible and ethical choices when building and utilizing AI technology. Also, Dan and Jay Cattlecar will shed light on the extraordinary properties of spider silk that has inspired a new innovation here in France. It's the biggest machine learning conference of the year. NeurIPS has kicked off in Montreal, and it's once again showing us how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing our society. According to the 2018 Gartner Hype Cycle for Emerging Technologies, AI and machine learning are now mature technologies, and many believe they're poised for mass adoption. Well, for more on this, let's turn to our tech expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. One of the exciting technologies that was announced at NeurIPS uh, conference was that of a software developed by the chip maker NVIDIA, which can create a realistic yet virtual world, and that usually takes a lot of skills and a lot of time. That's right, Julia. Researchers at NVIDIA used machine learning techniques to train a neural network with a realistic uh, video that featured multiple things like buildings, trees, cars, and surprisingly, within a week's time, this neural network was able to recreate uh, all these images and the scenario, entire scenario in a 3D realistic uh, virtual environment. Now, as you mentioned, the biggest advantage of uh, this technology is that it takes much less time to recreate these environments than, say, uh, the traditional techniques. So it could have major implications in the gaming industry. And more interestingly, besides the, the time factor, uh, there could be a customization of games. So for example, you can have you as a character in the game by, by just feeding a video of you right. to, to that network. So that's, that's a revolution uh, in the gaming, gaming industry. And secondly, it can also have an important application in the uh, world of virtual reality. So you can create virtual reality applications like say, uh, for training purposes. So yes, right. this this technology is going to be is going to be talked about a lot in the coming future. And now researchers from DeepMind presented a paper on the challenges of creating realistic music, but that's something that Google actually already tried. That's right. Google's other research division, Magenta, came up uh, with this AI uh, program called uh, Piano Genie. So the idea behind it was to simplify playing piano and to make uh, piano learning much easier. So as you can see here, there are only eight buttons instead of the 88 keys right. that a uh, normal piano has. So all you have to do is just bash away on these buttons and you can create uh, melodies. As you can see, Julia, here we have a web version of a Piano Jenny. So all you have to do is use these eight colored blocks. Which represent all the keys. Which represents all the keys and you have instant music at uh, your fingertips. Seems like you need a little bit more practice there, Dan. Thank you so much for that. Now, what also came out of this NeurIPS conference is an updated version of the Montreal Declaration for a Responsible Development of AI. The document aims to spark public debate and encourage progressive and inclusive orientation to the development of AI. Well, for more on this, let's cross over to Simon Lacaste-Julien, a researcher at Mila, Quebec's AI Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell us, why did you sign this declaration and why do you think this version is set to be more effective than the previous one? Well, I signed this declaration because uh, technology plays a greater and greater role in our life. And so it's important that it is used actually to improve our well-being and build a better world. Uh, I think uh, this technology is taking so much uh, a bit bigger role in our society. With greater power comes greater responsibilities. And in terms of why it will uh, be more effective than, than previous uh, declarations, I, I think um, uh, its consultation process was uh, key. Uh, it was actually um, a collaboration between uh, a lot of different people. So in particular, it, they were called co-construction workshops between citizens, uh, lawmakers, scientists, who would brainstorm uh, thinking about prospective uh, scenarios in the future to kind of identify key principles and key issues that would need to be addressed by this declaration. 
Now, we often hear the saying, AI is everywhere. Which sector in particular needs to have an ethical framework or is at risk of further excluding late adopters? Yeah, so um, there, there are a lot of different places where uh, we should make particular attention. So I'll, I'll just give some examples here. So uh, one example of a principle is uh, inclusion principle and diversity. And uh, so an example where the uh, AI has been used is to manage human resource, HR, uh, for example, to filter CVs of prospective applicants. And so uh, from this principle, we want to make sure that the, it's not used to uh, further bias, for example, like using racial or gender bias, uh, unlike what the data which train the algorithm contains. So the data is already biased. And so we, we actually want to be careful to not to reproduce or even uh, further the bias. And so there was actually a keynote at NeurIPS uh, on Monday where the founder of a, of a company called Atypica uh, builds a tool to manage HR databases, uh, which improve diversity actually. And now, while there is a moral question, uh, because machines have no understanding of the human or psychological and moral context, there is also a security question, especially when talking about inventions like killer robots. How does this declaration address the issue? Well, I think the declaration makes it very clear what's the position of, uh, of the people who participate in the declaration, in particular, uh, uh, the decision to kill should always be left to a human. So the responsibility should remain on humans. Uh, and so that in particular precludes the use of uh, autonomous lethal weapon, otherwise known as killer robots, uh, for which, by the way, a landmine is an example, which is already forbidden. And so then this declaration will uh, encourage the, the governments and institutions to actually follow up on that. And in particular in Quebec, there has been uh, the creation on Monday of uh, an observatory to make sure to, um, to, uh, to, to watch the application of the declaration and, and make further recommendations. Simon Lacoste, Julien, a researcher at MILA, Quebec's AI Institute and the University of Montreal. Thank you for that. And whether it's butterflies' wings or birds' beaks, scientists often look to Mother Nature in search of the next big technological breakthrough, a field known as biomimicry. And here in France, two researchers have found inspiration in spider silk to produce a synthetic membrane that could play an important part in futuristic te technologies. Dan and Jay Cattlecar reports. In their laboratory, these two researchers have mimicked one of the extraordinary properties of spider silk that could revolutionize smart textiles. What we discovered in the lab recently is that when you take a, a spider capture silk that has not been pre-stretched, that you compress it, you see that the fiber remains straight, whatever the, the compression, as if it was telescopic in a way. Using the electro-spinning technique, Arnaud Ant Koviak and Paul Grand-Georges created a synthetic membrane from a polymer solution. Polymers, like plastic and rubber, are substances made of long chains of molecules that are linked by chemical bonds. So what we have here is a drop of polymer solution. We charge the drop electrically with 10 kilovolts, more or less. This electric charging is going to generate the drop to destabilize and project a liquid rod, which is going to go towards the target. And as it flies in the air, solvent is going to evaporate from the liquid cylinder and it's going to end up as a solid fiber that's going to be splashed on a target and we end up with this fibrous membrane. When sprayed with a liquid like ethanol, this membrane transforms into a perfect deformable material that doesn't sag or break when compressed or stretched. What fuels this extreme stretchability is the um, uh, membrane reserve that are spontaneously formed when we compress the membrane. So thanks to the pulling action of surface tension, of the thin liquid layer, uh, the uh, membrane will reorganize into folds and ruffles that can be unfolded at will. This technology could have important applications in the smart textile sector. The issue we have right now is that when uh, someone put the t-shirt on, um, we, we stretch it a lot and the conductive thread can break and then the signal is gone. This kind of t-shirt would benefit a lot uh, from uh, the research of uh, Paul Grand-Georges with a, a very conductive and elastic membrane.
Once fully developed, this membrane could play a vital role in futuristic technologies like stretchable electronics and soft biomedical devices such as heart monitors and implantable neuroprostheses. It said imitation is the best form of flattery. It certainly holds true for spider silk. Thank you for that report, Dan. We're going to keep on talking about smart fabric in Test24. As we enter winter, at least on this side of the globe, we wanted to present you with two solutions to keep you cozy uh, during this winter season. Let's start with a, a heating scarf, Dan. That's right. It's made by the company InLab Design. And as you can see, it looks like a normal scarf. It's made of soft wool. But here, uh, there's a different pattern from the rest of the scarf. And these are conductive threads. So these are threads that are integrated into the fabric and are made of silver. And these conductive threads is what heats up the scarf. These are powered by a tiny battery that's located here. And all you have to do is turn it on. And it takes only 20 seconds for the scarf or for this part of the scarf to heat up. So you can wrap the scarf around your neck and enjoy, uh, enjoy the cold. I mean, currently it still feels like spring, but I'm sure in the uh, it's coming It's true that days, it's been very warm <laughs> yeah. here in France. So I'll, all of us will be able to enjoy this scarf. And the other uh, gadget we have, the, the winter gadget, are, is a, are a pair of gloves. So it's made by the company Thermic and it also uh, uses a similar principle. There's a battery here. So right, these are gloves if you, if you intend to go skiing. Skiing, yes, and right. even for driving. I mean, I drive scooter, I ride a scooter right. regularly. So all you have to do is press this, and in a matter of seconds, again, the gloves heat up, and you can have a very comfortable ski or a ride. Very well. Thank you, Dan. Dan, they're fashionably warm. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24, but you can watch it again on our website, france24.com.